All right. Let's get going. So, hey, it's Winslow. Um, here's a little bit something new. I've been talking about for some time. It's like a little uh, podcast, a little talk. I don't know. I don't know what this is going to be. It's the first episode. Who really knows on the first go around? But uh, what are we calling this? Tea time? I have tea. Green tea, by the way. <laughs> it's super early in the morning, but uh, I figure we can just do it now. We've been putting it off for some weeks, I guess. So, let's just get going. Um, so, this is going to work. I figure, maybe not weekly, bi-weekly. Let's see how the schedule fits. I'm currently in my uh, teaching position, so where I sit like every day to teach little kids over Zoom. So I figure I could use that space. Same thing. I got my uh, got my movies over there. V- well, shit, <laughs> viola right there. Everything I normally sit with. Move some studio stuff in here, so it doesn't sound too terrible. Back on track though. Um, yeah, figure a little topic, same as my YouTube videos, but uh, a little bit longer form, unedited, unedited, just because I like the discussion, and editing takes forever, and also opens up to have guests, so, yeah, if you want to be on a, a guest on the show, whatever this is, <laughs> sometime uh, in the future, you let me know, if you like what you see, if you don't like it. That's what it's all about, collaboration. So, uh, yeah, without any more whining, I guess, we'll get to, we'll get to the main thing. So, what's, uh, what do I want to talk about this episode, I guess? It's kind of the things that have been going on with me, because it's been a crazy few months. But instead of going on forever, I'll just tell you a little story. And then we'll get to some questions, because I made a post on Instagram about a few weeks ago, and everywhere else. But, uh, yeah, kind of like a AMA, Q&A kind of thing. Just some questions might be on your mind. And some people have asked. Some were goofy, like about the tea. And some were, uh, you know, normal music stuff. So anything goes appropriate. Anything goes. But, you know, anyway. Yeah, one more caveat, I guess, while I think about it. Don't expect uh, anything crazy uh, polished, you know? If, you'd, uh, if you've if seen anything of mine, you know it's like half just winging it, half, uh, half planned. It's all up here, but, well, a few notes. But enough of that. Let's get to the, let's get to the story. So last week, yeah, last week, especially by the time this comes out, I had a uh, the remix for Degs on Hospital, which is crazy because, like, <laughs> me on Hospital, really, like I, not that I never thought I'd get there in some capacity, but I thought I'd. I'm still thinking I'm like years, years off, you know, like I put in work. I, at least I think I do. I'm trying. I'm, I'm not really doing anything that no one else is doing. I'm just doing it, you know? And I guess I'm at this point where things are like falling together and people are recognizing whatever I'm doing, whatever that might be. So, yeah, like a month ago, it's October. So yeah, September, beginning September, got like an email from, I'm just going to say hospital in general, instead of giving out names, I'm sure you can uh, guess who it was. It wasn't Dex. So I'll give you that much. It wasn't him himself. Busy guy, really busy guy, but super nice to talk to. Um, yeah, and they're just like, hey, we got this project coming up uh, for Tag's remix album. Would you like to be a part of it? And I'm just sitting there like, uh, <laughs> like I get the email in like the middle of the day. I'm pretty sure I was doing something in class. I'm just like, oh, my God, like hospital and the tagline, everything I'm just like, are you sure you want me? You know, like what? You get the the whole imposter syndrome thing kicks in. It's just like, whoa. It's like, so you want you want me to remix decks for a hospital release? 
Not only that, you're telling me that I'm going to be next to Blade Runner. I mean, everyone else too, but then like, you know, it's no slight to everyone else, but Blade Runner, AC-13, um, what, Track and Karina, Run Spray Out, um, then Kikuyu Soul, was Degs and his brother. The whole thing was just crazy. And for me to be a part of that, it's just like, ah, uh, but yeah, it came, it came through. So I had two weeks basically to do the remix. And for the first week, I only had like the main vocals, which it was just, <laughs> yeah, to just double on the pressure, I guess. Or maybe the pressure isn't really there. It's just me putting pressure on myself. But I'll get to that point later. Um, so yeah, I had two weeks to do it. It came together somehow. But not without rewriting it or writing it twice. So the first version just used the vocals. It was kind of based around like a piano hook that I wrote and just some other things. It just kind of rolled along. But it wasn't good. It was... It was okay. Like, it felt more like a track that I put vocals on top. Except, you know, it was the other way around. Like, I had vocals and I wrote a track to it. And it had some of the stems, but it really... It it really didn't work. Like, the original track is like an F major or something like that. Which is weird, weird enough for me to write in. Because I don't write in major keys, like, at all. Like, who really does? I don't know. Fred being graphics. Maybe Kino sometimes. Just writing major keys is a bit weird. And I'm just, I don't know, maybe I'm too depressing and monotone to write in a major key. But I gave that a try. I was not feeling it. I got pretty like down about it. Cause I'm like, this is this is a shot. This is a really big shot. And I don't want to ruin it. So I scrapped it. I scrapped the whole thing I was working on for like a week. So a week straight, basically. Any free time I had, it was going to this remix. And it just didn't work. And I think I had four days left. I was like, I'm just going to, I'm going to rewrite it. And so I started again. You know, I didn't delete the project. I started a new one because I'm pretty sure I'll make something out of it soon. Or maybe I'll just stick like that remix that didn't work like on Patreon or something for people to listen to because it's good to see like the evolution of an idea. And that was an idea that did not work. It did not uh, survive natural selection. If we want to go there, it's pretty early, but I'm breaking out the jokes anyway. <laughs> so I went back to the drawing board for even more detail that you might not want to know. It was like midday. I did it. I got to the point where I was like, I'm scrapping this. So I took a break you know, go get something to eat, take a shower, try to relax. And I came back and just like went through the stems, just listened through them. And then just kind of latched on to this like arpeggio idea that's, it's in the main track, but it's very minimal and in the background, you know. And then I just kind of got into that and looped into that. And it's like, okay, I can kind of work with this, you know. So I tried to build a whole progression just around that at a similar baseline to the original, at least uh, metal, melody wise, but nothing, nothing too crazy. I mean, I was already like stressed out. I'm just like, let it go. Let the ideas come to me like this. I didn't just start producing today. Just relax. It'll come to you. You know, don't force it. And just doing that, things started started rolling, started rolling along. And I was like, all right, I can do this. <laughs> because again, this is hospital. And whatever you feel about them in the current times or the past or whatever, it's a huge look. It really is. Just as like anybody, like whether you produce or not, like you see hospitals, like one of the top, if not the top labels. I mean, you might like one more than the other, but like another label more than the other, but like you can't really discount them, you know, just as like 
the massive entity that they are. Anyway, and to look at someone and offer me, I'm still fairly unknown, you know? It was just, it's just crazy. But, uh, yeah, I latched on that idea, started pulling drums from other tracks. Cause again, I'm like strapped for time and just kind of went with it. My ideas, things I didn't want to go too crazy. They didn't have time to reinvent the wheel, you know, that kind of thing. I just wanted to get something going and something I'd be happy with. And I really think that's what came out. It's something I'm like happy with. I'm satisfied with. And that's, that's hard for me to do. It's just like be satisfied with something I made. It's a big reason why if you watch any of like the Twitch streams or me DJing, it's like, I rarely play my own tune. And that's because I'm just like such my own critic that I'm not satisfied enough to play them, you know, or I just don't feel like, I don't know, they hold up. And maybe that's just me because I like, I do look at comments and which I I really appreciate all of you who just like, you hear something I've done and you let me know you like it. or you Let me know, Hey, you could, some of you do it nice. You could work on this or whatever. Cause I'm, I'm open to all that, but yeah, it's just, still like me I guess getting over myself and I'm, I'm getting better about it because like I said I'm satisfied with this remix like I'm really happy how it came together it was just a huge like you know kick in the pants for me to get it together because I was I don't know I wasn't really in the low but just like yeah what am I doing right now then boom hospital we want you to remix all right we're back in action so yeah, I've been really pleased to see everybody's reactions. Um, yeah, it's just, it's one of those things you don't think will happen until it does. And I know it probably seems like some people, it's like, whatever, you gotta, you gotta remix. It happens for everyone, but this is new for me. So I'm, uh, I'm living it up, you know, I'm having my tea. I'm having a bit of extra pizza and some extra ice cream afterwards just to celebrate. I know it already came out. And really, I've been working on it. I worked on it a month ago, but, you know, every day feels uh, like a new celebration, I guess. And, uh, I mean, there's more coming after this now, because that opened up a lot. So I have plenty to talk about coming soon. And on that note, wrapping up the story, coming soon to uh, Spotify, Bandcamp, iTunes, everywhere else you buy music on the 23rd. Got a double header. My new EP on Gold Fat, which is called Mumbles of Grace. I'll tell you more about the name later. As you know, there's always some kind of inside story joke going on. It's a two tracker. So it's Mumbles of Grace and then To Walk a Mile. They're kind of like uh, yin and yang to each other. I don't know. Dark light, positive, negative ones. Kind of, it's not happy. Uh, Captain uh, Mike has called it thoughtful, <laughs> which is pretty cool. I, I give it that because it's a, uh, it's definitely one of those, probably one of my more most musical tracks that just kind of came together like me playing the piano, nice little synth bass line, almost like you'd find in like a like someone playing the moog in a band instead of the bass guitar that kind of thing. Um, a bit more open, not dance floor but a uh, melodic section at the back end. Then the other one to walk a mile is a bit more pensive bit more moody um not depressing but you know it's a bit more a bit more dark i'll talk about it a bit more later on maybe in another episode but uh yeah i'm really looking forward to those coming out yeah um also and then the other one because that's not the double header the double header is two an ep and a single so those that's two tracks on an ep all of this came together so weird yeah i didn't i didn't plan but if you could have anything to do with it, don't try to schedule a ton of releases on one day. But I have a single on Solvent, the Soul Music 2020 compilation called uh, Love Letters, which is kind of, it's a bit moody. It's another like thoughtful one. It's kind of nostalgic feeling, I think, to me. Just uh, 
brings back ideas of like my childhood, teenager years, skateboarding, things like that. Again, I'll talk about it more later on. But that's what's uh, that's what's up for me in October release wise, outside of the Degs remix or the version as they call it. Um the November it's another tune. But we'll talk about that later. So take a little drink real quick. Oh yeah. Trying a different brand of tea that was just upstairs in the cabinet. It's not as good as the other one, but you know, just, uh, yeah. American tea, as I've learned, it's nothing like, uh, UK tea or anywhere else in the world, basically. Yeah. Not nearly as strong. Also it comes with a string and then apparently that's like sacrilege and then my mug's not good enough. I need an offensive. I don't know. All these things I've learned over the past month. If you haven't, um, been clued into tea gate 2020, that'll be a, that'll be another, that'll be another episode. But it's uh, been something. Instead of a, I tried to cancel me over tea. I just made a small joke. But anyway, I'll talk about it later. Let's get to your questions and then wrap this up. Because, uh, like I said, just trying this one thing. If you're liking this so far, drop something in the comments. There'll be the video, YouTube. There'll be audio in the normal places, iTunes, Spotify. Maybe SoundCloud, I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to keep that account because SoundCloud's for the 20th time. It's, it's kind of dying. It's just there, but it's it's still a thing. It's like Facebook. Like, why do we have Facebook? It's pointless. I don't know. Anyway, let's get to some questions. So we'll start at the bottom. Got a question from Marco Luna, M Luna 512. Uh, promoter runs, ran, runs events down in Texas. Um, suppose to meet him earlier this year, then, uh, the Rona hit. So his question is how many hours a week do you work on production? Hmm. I want to say at least maybe two hours a day. So there's seven days and only two hours, 14 hours. So I would say 14 at a minimum. And at a maximum, a lot, just like some days it's literally all day, like wake up, do it, take some breaks, but go. But now that I'm back in like the swing of things with like teaching and well, that's really teaching classes, um, regular university classes, almost done December. That's the date I'm getting ready. I'm, I'm almost done so many years, but yeah. So I want to say 14 is like a minimum maybe almost like full time when I got nothing to do, like over the summertime. Yeah. It was just tracks, tracks, tracks. And those are all the tracks that are coming out now, by the way. So yeah, it, it really does vary. Like I don't force myself to write anything. I'm like, I've been on it to be like, take a break. Don't worry about it. Things will happen when they happen. Don't try to force these tunes, but also stay on it. You know, so I don't, well, not like I'm going to lose some skill or anything, but just so I can, you know, stay productive, it's constantly coming up with ideas. Like I come up with sketches, like nothing, but to make those sketches in the full tracks takes, takes work. And sometimes I got to plow through like the suck, the tiredness of whatever happened before, whatever happened earlier in the day, you know, like sometimes you just don't feel it, but sometimes you got two weeks to do a remix and then you got to do it like right now, right now I got a remix, um, thing for today, uh, request today. I was like, oh, okay, we need it pretty soon. Oh, like how soon is soon? Well, we need it Monday. Well, today was Monday. So I have, a. Uh, yeah, that's another thing. We'll talk about in another time. Anyway, another question from my man, Finn Adrift, Thomas. Good guy. Personal tips on balancing, producing, and other work. Just find time. Or well, not even find time. You gotta make time. You you really do. You just gotta make time. I don't know where I was gonna go with that. It's like something insightful, but it really is 
You got to make time. If you want it, you'll find the time to do it. Just set aside half hour, 15 minutes maybe. Just open up, stick a project down, stick a little idea down. Disappear for a bit. Come back, pick at it. Disappear for a bit. Do what else you got to do. Carry around like a field recorder. You have a phone. Whistle something into the phone. It's like a whole, just a bunch of videos of me walking around like a building. Just, and then I remember it for later. Or if I like come to a piano, because I, I guess benefit of being a music teacher, there's always like a piano somewhere around. Even when I was back at school, like a uh, university, whatever you want to call it. There's just a piano. So I, you know, plop down, bang out some chords, and then you can just edit it. I mean, everything's like lo-fi sample based anyway. Phone recording will do just fine. But yeah, make time, take breaks, don't force it. You'll find your rhythm, you know, which that sounds cheesy as shit. You'll find your rhythm with producing music. No, but like you'll find something that works for you. So give it a shot. It's not something unless you're like the kind of person that likes to plan. Like hour here, hour there, just sit down and try something. Won't be so bad. Maybe. I don't know. That was my chair. I don't have gas. Not this morning. Anyway. All right. Perspective for the hot one. Why did you microwave water to make tea? Because it was a joke. And I like to think I can be funny sometimes. Clearly, I upset everyone in the UK and the surrounding areas and her majesty herself. I'm sorry, but it's been some time. I'm an active tea drinker. Now I learned the error of my ways. Just let it go. Please. <laughs> yeah, that's never gonna, never gonna go. Um, all right. Ian Suklau. Favorite time of the year. Also your Zodiac sign. Have you been talking to my girlfriend? <laughs> What's your birth chart? Where were you born? Oh, whatever. That's okay. Um, favorite time of year, like right now, like fall into summer, when it cools down, leaves turn, all that jazz. Some tea. I don't care about pumpkin spice, anything, but you know, whatever. That's part of the season, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's been good to just like get out look at all the things changing it's kind of like just a nostalgic time like you remember when you're younger and like time starts to change you can't stay out as late because uh you know it gets darker earlier everything looks kind of cool now i walk around with a camera all the time so i can just like this is fun like get out in the breeze skate around man that's what i used to do all the time we used to do all the time is like skating during the fall was like the most fun just like through the neighborhood yeah, that's what inspired the track uh, Love Letters coming out October 23rd on Sullivan, by the way. Anyway, and my Zodiac sign. I'm a Cancer, you know? I, I know nothing about that. Um, I'm going to keep comments to myself about Zodiac, but I uh, respect those who are into it and don't use it as a crutch. Like, oh my God, I'm such a this. That's why. Like, no, you have bad habits. Get over yourself. You know, grow up. But then there are people who are just genuinely interested in it, and that's cool. Yeah. I'm not really one of those people, but I see the value in it or the value that people place in it, you know? Mad respect, always. Um, this is a good question, and I cut off the name so I don't see who it is. But how do I music? You just do it. I don't know. <laughs> you try. And eventually your ideas start to make sense, maybe. That's all I do. I swear I just like wing this stuff half the time. Segway, my Home Alone EP last month, was all about this, just winging ideas. Like, if you listen to it, and if you want to pick it apart or take each track as a whole how it is, random, weird ideas, throwing stuff at the wall, it's loosely drum and bass loosely as in no conventions other than like a two-step drum pattern everything else is just kind of wild 
but you all liked it. I appreciate it. I never thought anything would come out of it. And now it's like, it helped me out, you know, just not like elevate me, but like more people know. I don't know. The things music is supposed to do, it's supposed to get you exposure, whatever. Although exposure doesn't put tea in my cup, if you understand what I'm saying. So links in the description down the band camp and everything. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Somewhat. Anyway, um, it's another one. So Gareth Cotton, how do you make your tea? Milk first or synth? What the hell is synthetic transient? I Is that like a real tea thing? I'm just not there yet. Um, well, I put water in the old ultra kettle over there. I turn it on, let it do its thing, auto shut off, crazy, right? Um, and it has the blue light. That's how you know it's working. Then I pour it in there, just let it sit, let it brew, as Siren says. Um, a little bit of silence right there, because that's letting it brew. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, give it a little stir, squeeze technique, don't forget the squeeze technique. Siren also showed me everything, by the way. He also is the one that slated me the hardest. So, you know, the person who has a teacher has to beat you down first, you know. Um, then, yeah, maybe drop a sugar in there. I'm not really a milk person, mostly because, you know, doesn't agree down there. But that's that's basically how I do it, I guess. Yeah. I'm drinking tea like more like every day. So it's like, it's a, it's a thing now. I don't want this alarm to go off. I got some time. Um, one more, another question, not one more. There's a few more. Okay. So my man, Kyle goes by Woodsman. He also produces music. We went to school together. Um, or going to school together. Although I'm not at the school anymore. Cause I'm almost done. Anyway, good guy. How do you get your music to labels, big and small? All right, good question. Oh, so you can go the like traditional route. Send a demo, demo email. Demo. What the? Send a demo email, or a label engine Dropbox, something like that. Hi, my name is this. I have a few tunes you might like. Check them out. You got the time. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Something like that. Your name. I think I made a video over that. Like I've done it so much that I just kind of got like the the blueprint down. But there's also another thing I'm going to make a video about, which is kind of the longer game, which is talking to people at the label, but in a more casual sense, like artists at label, maybe somebody that works A&R promotions, if they're that big. It's honestly worked for me. Just like establish relationships with people instead of like, I want to talk to the label, like direct to a person at the label, you know, that's really helped. Like before I never sent, okay, like years, years ago, I sent email, like a demo email to Gold Fat. I was nowhere near ready to produce, ready to like release anything. But when it came time, I more or less just talked to my kiss a few times and he asked me for some dunes same thing with solvent they just hit me up kind of out of the blue because i had sent demos years ago again was nowhere near ready but around the time i was they were just like hey you got some dunes send them by code as well because i just got to know people as people you know and also i'm generally like curious about like behind the scenes things. So like a and r and promotions, um, anything like that. So I'll just go and ask questions about, oh, how do you do this? How do you know what kind of tracks to pick? How do you determine whether somebody's close enough that you wanna try and build them up from where they are and give them a chance or say, hey, go back to the drawing board and but come back to us in a few months, you know, that kind of thing. So asking questions, get to know people there. Um, friend of a friend kind of thing like we're all what is it six degrees of separation like from everyone in the world or something like that like you know somebody that knows somebody or something like that they could get your foot in the door but that might take a bit longer than if you just send a demo like sometimes i've sent a demo to where i get a response the next day 
And sometimes I don't get a response for months. And they're like, hey, your track link is dead. Or did you still want this? And I'm like, what? <laughs> no, just no. Nah. Yeah, you know, and that's where like self release comes in because you can just build yourself up from there. But that's a totally different monster to tackle, and it takes like a lot of uh, determination to just kind of do things yourself because you really don't know who's out there watching. But on the same token, you don't know who's out there watching, and it could be somebody high up, a la getting a remix on hospital out of the blue. You really never know who's watching. In a good way. So yeah, either demos or play a long game, get to know somebody. They refer you, oh, this guy's a good guy. Listen to his tracks. Or, oh yeah, I heard you actually, you've been talking to me for a while, but I, I saw you write music. You want to send us some stuff sometimes? It really does work. Um, Scalagram. When will, I can't never, I can't like say this. When will Win and them sist and drop? Once I get around in time. So it's basically, it's more or less an inside joke. So Eminem stand, but like a parody version talking about Siren and Andy C. I haven't gotten to yet, but that, that'll, that'll happen. Um, and last question, another one from Finn and Drift. When is it right to approach labels with demos? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, it depends when you have, you could go from, I wrote a track. I feel, I feel okay about it. Send it to a dip, send it uh, to a label that works. Um, if you're aiming a bit higher for like specific labels, it might be a bit harder to reach or get to build up a body of work, maybe two, three, four tracks. Um, and then send those again, talk to artists to get a better idea, like artists at the label to get a really, to get a better idea of what they like. Um, that always works. Really. It's just kind of, kind of like a, a feel thing. Like when you feel you're ready, go for it. But kind of, like I said, in the demo video and how to send demos and things like that, it's a uh, be realistic. Don't like, not saying you personally, but like in general, it's like, oh, I made my first tune ever. Now I'm going to send it to Goldie from Metalheads. No, you're not ready. Just, just be realistic. Pull that ego back a little bit and understand that it's all going to take time. You're taking a chance. Don't let it knock you down if you get rejected or no response at all. It, it happens. But you'll know when the right time is because you'll feel comfortable. At least like there's like a level, I guess. First you feel comfortable, so you want to send it. And then it get to like a point where you're used to sending demos and you're used to whoever you're sending them to, you know what they want, that kind of thing. So you're like, okay, now I know I can send a demo and things will be okay, or I might get a response. You still never know if they're going to pick it up unless it's like, you know them so well, they look like your friend at some point. Like, I know if I send my kiss from Mr. Porter a tune for Gold Fat, they'll more or less say yes, barring some, like, feedback, like, change this or work on this or, you know, your mix down's terrible, your snare shit, that kind of thing. <laughs> but that comes that comes with time, like most things. So, yeah, you'll you'll know. So, that That's all the questions. And that is first episode of Tea Time with me, your host, with not the quite most Winslow and uh Yeah, I'll see you next time around. It's been fun. Let me know what you think about this. Um who would you like to see a guest? If you'd like to be a guest, it's not like some, you got to be high profile and do this. It's like, no, I'm, I just want to like have conversations, talk to people, you know? Like, again, I'm, I'm just some guy. I just happen to be doing this for a while. And I've fortunately worked my way up to where 
apparently my name means something, but you know, I'm just here figuring out how to make tea and making terrible snares like anyone else. It isn't um, June Miller, Joe Ford, Noisia, anyone on Eat Brain. Um, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm just, just a guy uh, with some ideas. I just uh, have the drive to execute these ideas. So like this idea, this podcast thing, maybe it's nothing. Maybe it falls flat. Maybe it doesn't. Who knows? Let me know what you think. Comments, questions, concerns, complaints. Direct them towards me. Discord, Patreon, plug. <laughs> Comments, social media, you know you know the drill. But appreciate you for listening through. If you made it all the way through, nice. This is good. I'm going to plan another one. So, again, don't know if it's weekly bi-weekly once a month once a year who knows but i'll try to keep up with it i don't have to edit this whole thing outside of maybe some mouth noises because that's just how i talk i guess i don't know yeah go drink this tea go work on some tunes and gotta teach some kids later all in a day's work right yeah see you later I don't know what this thumbs up is. I don't do that. Peace, thumbs up. Um, yeah. Just fade out with the music. Brought to you by Scholar Girl. We're working on a project together. I'm bobbing my head, but I'm not actually listening to music. I'm going to edit it in. <laughs> anyway. It's the power of Pine Salt, baby. It's supposed to be Hollywood or something like that. But uh, Pine Salt works too. Got to keep it fresh around here. You know what I'm saying?